I'm going to show you how to use anonymous sign-ins to authenticate your users without requiring them to enter credentials. This is a great use case for a SaaS product or an application where you want the user to be able to experience the value before having that friction of authenticating. Let's get into it. So here we have an app where you can reserve seats in a cinema. These grayed out ones have already been booked, so are unavailable. Let's open up the console and select a couple of seats. And then under cookies, we can see this is an authenticated user with a session from Superbase. But they didn't need to go through that sign-in process. They just landed on the booking page. And if we expand out this user object, we can see this is underscore anonymous field is set to true. So the user has been able to use our app and experience the value of it before we jam that authentication page in their face. So now that we want them to purchase some tickets, let's get them to authenticate with credentials. So let's say they use Google to authenticate and they now have those seats confirmed. If we look at the updated cookie, we can see that user is now authenticated with Google credentials and the is underscore anonymous field is set to false. So we have two types of authenticated users. We have authenticated anonymous users, and then we have authenticated users who have provided us credentials. So a little bit more trustworthy. Not much, but a little. So how can we set up different authorization rules for each of these types of authenticated users? With RLS, of course. So here we have a policy enabling the select action for anyone. If you're not super familiar with row level security or RLS, don't worry, I'll leave a video at the end of this one so you can go deeper. But if we edit this one to have a look, it applies to the public role, so everyone, and the expression is just true. So everyone has read access. Authenticated users, authenticated anonymous users, unauthenticated users, everyone can read from this table. For our insert policy, the user must be authenticated. So remember, that covers both our anonymous users and our users that have authenticated with credentials. The expression for this policy is that the signed in user must match the user underscore ID column, so they can only make a booking for themselves, not on behalf of other users. And then for update, which is what we use to actually confirm or lock in those seats, again, the user needs to be authenticated, but in the expression, we're checking a field in the user's JWT to confirm that is underscore anonymous is set to false. So it must be an authenticated user who has provided credentials, so not an anonymous user. And we also have that same check to make sure that the user is only updating bookings for their user underscore ID. As for deletes, so long as the user underscore ID column matches the currently signed in user, then they can delete the seat selection. So let's test this is all working the way we expect from the database layer. So over in the SQL editor, we can drop down this role field and select the authenticated role. This then allows us to impersonate any of our users. So let's select one of these anonymous users. So if we run this select statement, we can see all of those seats. And if we filter this down to just the ones where the ID is equal to our anonymous users ID, we can see none of the selected seats are confirmed. So let's try to update those seats, setting the is confirmed column to true. And it looks like everything succeeded, but if we select those seats again, we see is underscore confirmed is still set to false. And this is the expected behavior for updates or deletes. It looked like it worked because we got that success no rows returned message, but really it was blocked by RLS. So the statement itself succeeded, but it was only able to update or delete the ones it was allowed to, which just happened to be an empty result set because RLS has our back. So to enable anonymous sign-ins, head over to settings and then authentication. And under user signups, we have this toggle for allow anonymous sign-ins. It's disabled by default. And when you enable it, you get these warnings to make sure you check things like your RLS policies to ensure your database is still secure. If you wanna go deeper with RLS, I recommend you check out this video right here. We go through a little bit more of the theory of RLS and build up to quite a complex policy that's enforcing rules from another table. But until next time, keep building cool stuff.